So today I'm going to be talking to you about the growing epidemic, which is social media, culture, and influence leading to teen suicide and depression. Um, so between 2009 and 2017, rates of suicidal thoughts and depression from ages 14 to 17 increased by more than 60%. And also with this, um, among young people, um, rates of suicidal thoughts and depression increased um, significantly and in more cases doubled in 2008 to 2017. And lastly, every 100 minutes, a teen takes their own life from depression. So the first issue I'm going to be talking about today in the subset of this is this idea that blissful ignorance is being taken away. So to do this, I'm going to be examining the life of a teen on just a regular day, but one in the 80s and one in today's modern day. So for this, let's just do the constant of a weekend or a Friday home alone without plans. In the 80s, this might just consist of going home from school and eating dinner with your parents, maybe watching a movie, and of course you might think from now and then what your peers and classmates are doing, but you don't really see this and you won't really know until you go back to school. So that thought goes away very quickly and you're left to enjoy this movie and enjoy quality time with your family. So let's say for the purposes of this talk that you're doing the same thing in today's time. You have a Friday night and you don't have plans, but you have a cell phone, okay? You could be watching the same movie, but every five minutes you're checking your notifications and you're going on Instagram. You see people posting at a party that you weren't invited to. You see all these gatherings and all these nice photos of people that are in your class that look like they're having so much more fun than you. And to make it worse, you can go on Snapchat to get a break of Instagram. But what's worse about Snapchat is, if you don't know, there's a feature on Snap Maps where it's a subset of Snapchat where anyone who has their location shared on Snapchat has an automated Bitmoji, which is basically just an animated image of yourself. So what this does is if everyone were having a party that you weren't invited to, all of their emojis would be at this house and they could see your emoji just over there by itself. So this visual representation of everyone's over here and I'm over here, chances are you're not gonna enjoy that movie and chances are you're gonna think about that. And having that visual representation of knowing what people are doing and knowing where they are is gonna be much more harmful than this blissful ignorance of maybe figuring people are going out and figuring people are having this party, but not really knowing for sure of it because you don't have people documenting it on the day-to-day -day basis. So moreover with this, we're gonna talk about social media apps in particular. Anytime a teenager opens up Instagram, you're seeing people that are prettier than you, smarter than you, richer than you, and just look like they're living a better life. But in reality, and what we'll get to later, is that half the time this isn't true, but you're still seeing it. And what I wanted to touch on today was a phenomenon that a lot of psychologists has come to call as a media drain, which is basically the idea that in a normal day to day without your phone or technology, you could only see like a couple hundred people maximum a day. But within being on social media for 30 minutes, you could see tens of thousands of different people living their lives, posting, whatever, from ce celebrities to people on the other side of your town. So what they call this media drain is basically the fact that you're getting overloaded with other people and you're seeing far more people than you should on a daily basis. And because it's Instagram and you're promoting what should be the best image of yourself, chances are half the time they're looking better than you look right now laying in bed on your phone on this app. And a lot of the problems that people are having with Instagram and why Instagram is labeled the most toxic app of social media is that it is so easy with the click of a button to see anyone you want living the life that you want. So you can look up people in New York. If you wanna be in New York, you can look up NYU students if you wanna to go to that college, et cetera. And you just see these people on a day-to-day -day basis and it really harms your inner psych. And why they think this is so dangerous is that the less people you see a day, the less people you have to compare yourself to so they think that the more and more you're opening up yourself to seeing people, whether it's online or in person, the more effect it has on your self-conscious and your body image. So um, with that statistic, um, basically the psychologist just says that there's an overload of information that you should be seeing on a day-to-day -day basis. 
And it talks about the effects which of course lead to depression, suicidal thoughts, and action. What I really wanted to discuss for the last portion of my speech was something that I think a lot of teenagers can relate to and most adults don't even realize how big of a problem it is, which is Facetune culture in the modern day social media. So if you're not aware, there's hundreds of apps where they're free and you download them, you put in a picture and they can change anything about you. They can elongate your legs, they can slim your waist, they can take away any acne spots, they could change your eye color, they can put on makeup for you, they can even change the outfit you're wearing. And the scary, scary thing about this is they look really believable to the point where you can post one of those pictures and half of your Instagram or even most of your Instagram will have no clue that you even did anything to this picture. And you might be thinking, well, I'm not good at technology, I'm not a software editor, I can't do this, but these apps are being intentionally made to be really easy to use and marketed towards children and people of adolescence nowadays. And with a couple clicks of a button, you can make these really realistic changes to your body. And they even use special marketing to promote these, such as slim your stomach for your Instagram. And honestly, I, I realized this when I was 12, that all my friends were face tuning their photos. At 12 years old, all my friends were editing their body image, which is extremely hard to digest. Moreover, Facetune is a billion dollar company, which shows that it has its users. The app itself has been free. And the problem that this creates on social media is that, one, people have no clue what's real and what's fake. You can put an edited photo of your body up, and if a follower has no clue that it's real, they see this photo, that's a false image of beauty, and they find themselves unable to confine to something that's truly just unrealistic and edited. But that leads them to do two things. That leads them to promote unhealthy eating, um, raises, I guess, body image issues, body dysmorphia, suicidal thoughts, and then it also encourages them to think, if everyone else is editing their photos, I'm gonna edit my own. So it creates this endless cycle a face tune and editing to the point where majority of the photos you see on Instagram are edited. Like nine out of 10 photos on Instagram are not true. And I think that something in the early 2000s was to bash celebrities for face tuning and editing their photos, but it's become something so normalized now where the majority of people using that software are teenagers and it's not celebrities. More celebrities face tune their photos than teenagers, which it's a grown problem because the number of people doing that are getting younger and younger each year according to studies. So with this, Instagram, to no one's surprise, has been labeled the most toxic app on social media. And um, even the creators of Instagram have gone on to create statements about authenticity of posts and body image issues. But obviously, change doesn't happen overnight and something like this is culturalized so much in the modern day that people are not going to stop face tuning because they don't know if their friend has stopped face tuning that's the problem with the app you don't know what your peers look like and you don't know what celebrities look like and instagram models look like so instagram has become such a serious app where its design was to be intended for friendly use you were supposed to just take a picture of your friend and post it on instagram but when my best friend posts on Instagram, she has to physically put her phone face down on the table and walk away from it for an hour at a time. And one day I asked her, I said, why do you do that? And she said, well, every time I post, I'm worried that the post isn't good enough. I'm not gonna get enough likes. I'm not gonna get enough comments. So if I check my notifications after I post the photo, I get really sick and I feel like I'm gonna throw up. And that was such a casual statement, but to really digest that coming from a 16 year old girl and to think about how normalized that behavior is, it's really disgusting. And we have to look at the effects that this social media face tune image body culture has had on not even just women, it's everyone nowadays face tuning their photos. And moreover, there's this false perception again that I want to reach on that everyone, parents think that social media is this wonderful thing that kids can't get away from it and that they love it. But majority of times that a teen is on social media, I can guarantee that they're not feeling happy and I can guarantee that they're feeling upset with themselves and jealous over somebody else. So 
With this, I just have a photo of a, this is an actual advertisement I found of one of those face tuning apps. Um, as you can see, the stomach is pulled in, face features are changed, the legs are elongated, and you have slimmer waist, you have bigger butt, less hips, remove skin flaws, remove stretch marks, remove scars, etc. Basically, these apps go back to the larger issue of social media, and also, what I want to end with is that this problem is not one that is going away, but change could be done in moderation. Even leaving yourself an hour less time per day on your phone can help rid suicidal thoughts and actions. So um, I encourage all of you and your peers to take a step back and ask yourselves the question, which is, when was the last time that social media has made me genuinely happy? And if the answer to that takes you more than a couple seconds to come up with, then I implore you to do what you can and take a step back because I'm tired of this toxicity that has created what is considered to be a deadly consequence for teens and um, preteens. So thank you for listening.